So a bit like when you buy a brand spanking new outfit makes you feel like a million quid. When you change the styling of a car, it can transform that car's appeal. Because believe it or not, this brand new Hyundai Santa Fe shares most of its parts, platforms and powertrains with the former car of the year, the Kia Sorento. So is this just a Kia Sorento in different clobber? I mean, is it even worth me being here? Shall I just send you over to Rich's car review of the Kia Sorento on the Car Buyer channel? Should I just, I mean, okay, it's not as simple as that. Subscribe to the Car Buyer YouTube channel, click on the bell icon, like this video if you like it, and let's get cracking on the Santa Fe review. Hyundai is on a roll right now. It scooped no fewer than six wins in our 2022 Best Car Awards. So we've got pretty high hopes for this updated Santa Fe. As well as tweaked styling, there's new electrified engines, this one's plug-in hybrid, and new gearboxes, as well as substantial changes to the interior. Now we're going to run you through everything you need to know over the next few minutes, including whether this has the potential to be a new class favourite. And where better to start than in here? Now, moving the new Santa Fe onto the newer Kia Sorento platform means that it is wider, longer, taller than before. I mean, it's big, this is a big car. I mean, we'll sit in the back in a minute, but even at the front here, it feels big. And would you look at this? I mean, I know I'm not a fan of touch sensitive, touchy, slidey controls, but Hyundai have decided to give you a button for everything. Have some buttons, have some more buttons, and buttons for things that also need buttons. I reckon if you hit these buttons in like a particular order, maybe it'll open up a portal to like South Korea or something. I don't know, but I find it all really satisfying. And it's quite nice that you can just look straight ahead, change the climate controls without having to take your eyes off the road. Anyway, it is just really quite lovely in here. I mean, you've got some nice, soft touch bits around the cabin. The quality doesn't feel far off a Jaguar or a Land Rover. You've got this 10 and a quarter inch lovely large touch screen here in the middle, which comes in every model. Got some familiar software, nice and easy to use, very nice and responsive as well. If you go for a higher spec car, then you get larger digital dials, which are just nice and clear, easy to follow. Oh, and indicator cameras. So it turns on a camera on your blind spots. Yeah, I like it in here. Oh, this is also worth mentioning. Smartphone holder is so satisfying. So you put it in like that and it just slots in like that. There are two specs to choose from when ordering your new Santa Fe. Prices might be slightly higher than you would expect, but you get a whole load of kit for your cash. We'd recommend the entry-level premium trim, which comes with heated leather seats, dual zone climate control, and a 10 speaker audio system. Ultimate brings those digital dials, a panoramic sunroof, and semi-autonomous drive functions for around three grand more. Full specs can be found at carbuyer.co.uk. Now, I don't want to get too technical with you here, uh, but it's very wafty, very smooth, very relaxing, just loads of waft, you know? That's because the new Santa Fe is fitted with self-leveling suspension as standard. So it just means that the ride feels that little bit more plush. I mean, aside from a bit of wind noise when you're going at full speed or a little bit of engine grumble when you're at full acceleration, this car stays very, very nice and quiet. The trade-off is that it's just not that much fun. But if you are after a, a fun-ish family car, which not many people will be, but if you are, Skoda Kodiak is probably a better bet, or a Land Rover Discovery Sport, maybe. That's not to say that this car is sloppy, because it's not, it's very composed. The grip is very nice, and it just soaks up all the lumps and bumps and cracks and stuff in the road really nicely. It just doesn't make you want to drive quickly I guess. It feels nice and slow and relaxed and lovely. One thing I don't like about the Santa Fe is the steering. So it kind of feels artificially heavy but then also doesn't really give you that much feedback which is a bit of a weird combination isn't it when you think about it. I would rather just have some nice light steering and then I can park this super massive heavy car onto my driveway with no worries thank you please 
This is the plug-in hybrid model, which will be a little bit more appealing to company car drivers because of the obvious tax benefits. But if you just want a privately owned family car, we'd recommend going for the regular hybrid because that a bit like the Kia Sorento, just a bit smoother and a bit more efficient considering it's lugging around a very, very heavy car. Now, both cars, performance-wise, are pretty decent. I mean, the regular hybrid will do 0 to 62 in 9.1 seconds. This plug-in hybrid will do it a smidge quicker. But again, this isn't the sort of car that you want to put your foot down. As mentioned, the Santa Fe is a pretty large car, but that doesn't mean you need to panic about running costs. There's no tow car friendly diesel model anymore. Instead, you get a choice of a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. Now the standard hybrid only has a small battery, so you're not gonna be running around on electricity for extended periods. It'll officially do 44.1 miles per gallon in premium trim with CO2 emissions of 145 grams per kilometer or slightly less favorable figures if you select the ultimate spec with its bigger wheels. You should be able to get around 37 to 38 miles per gallon in normal driving, which is impressive for a car of this type. Opt for the plug-in hybrid and Hyundai claims 173 miles per gallon is achievable, which is quite frankly uh, very unlikely unless you're going to do short journeys and you plug the car in at the end of each day. If that is how you're going to use it, however, you may well end up seeing more than 173 miles per gallon. It's worth noting that every Santa Fe costs more than 40 grand, meaning that you'll pay a tax surcharge for the first five years, which incidentally is exactly how long the warranty lasts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, seven seats. The Hyundai Santa Fe comes with seven seats as standard. And as long as you're not super tall, you can sit in whichever seat with reasonable comfort. I mean, Hyundai are saying that this middle row here has 34 millimeters extra space. And because it's a bit wider, I mean, I've got plenty of room back here. I'm five foot six, loads of leg room, loads of headroom. And actually, because the floor is completely flat, if you're the person that's stuck in this middle seat, it's not too bad at all. The rearmost seats are accessed by folding electrically the middle row forward. As long as the passengers in the second row don't mind a slight reduction in legroom, then there's enough space for average sized adults to be comfortable in the third row, even if they're generally best reserved for children. Impressively, the rearmost seats get individual air conditioning controls and a cup holder. And then there is the boot. Now, granted, if you're going to use all seven seats, then the space back here isn't exactly great. I mean, you can fit some small bags, but if you're gonna do a road trip with a load of mates in the car, yeah, you're gonna need a roof box. But if you're going to use the five seat configuration, you get a gargantuan 571 liters of space, which yes, is smaller than before, but I mean, it's still massive. You're not really gonna miss the 50 liters that's missing, are you? No, it's worth bearing in mind, if boot space is your thing, then technically this new Santa Fe has a smaller boot than the Kodiak and the Sorento. But once you fold down all the seats, you've got 1,649 litres of space. It's quite a lot, isn't it? Oh, electric boot lid. Fancy. Ah, feels like it's time for some Santa Fe deal makers and deal breakers. It might not be quite as big or boxy as the Kia Sorento, but the Santa Fe is still a hugely spacious family car. There's no pure electric model granted, but the hybrid engines make this a really relaxing car to drive and one that shouldn't cost the earth to run. We often moan about minimalist button-free interiors. The Santa Fe is the opposite. Quality is excellent throughout too. It won't matter to most buyers, but the Santa Fe isn't much fun to drive. It prioritizes comfort above anything else. And at more than £40,000, every model is subject to the VED surcharge, which eats into the fuel savings you might make with those efficient hybrid engines. So from out of reasonable obscurity, the high and die badge is something that's now quite common on UK roads, thanks to the uh, Hyundai Tucson Car Buyers Car of the Year 2022, the Ionic 5 and this new Santa Fe that have really helped enhance the brand's reputation. If you're after a highly practical family SUV that has low running costs, long warranty and a very upmarket interior, this should be on your shortlist right next to the Kia Sorento, which is still technically our favorite large family car. But that's up to you which one you think has the best dress sense.
If you like this video, then why not watch our Kia Sorento review or catch up on our Family SUVs playlist. Thanks for watching.